Okay, so that is the fall position method. Now, let us work with some step-by-step -step algorithms. The first step for the fall position method is to select the appropriate lower bound and upper bound as an initial guess, as a two initial guess. What do we mean by the appropriate two initial guess? What it means is that the, C, the two initial guess, x lower bound and x upper bound, should satisfy this inequality, which means basically the function at xl multiplied with a function at xu have to change the sign or negative. That is the first step. The second step is we can predict the new root x sub m based on equation 5 that we developed on the previous slide and again repeat it in here in this equation. This is the equation to calculate the newly predicted root. After we calculate the predicted root x sub m, then step number three, we have to make a check. There's only three possibility. If fxl times fxm, that product is negative. Now, if that is the case, then we can see very clearly that x sub m, the newly predicted root, will play the same rule like the x upper bound. So what does that mean? If this is case A is true, then the logo bow, the new logo bow is the same, but the new upper bow will be different and it is equal to the newly predicted root. Because as you can see, the, the x of m will play the same role as x of u based on these two similar ident uh, inequality equation. On the other hand, if we are in the opposite situation, that means if the function at xl times the function at xm is positive. In that case, then, the story is a little bit reversed in the sense that the new lower bound will be equal to the predicted root that we just calculated, but the upper bound is the same thing as the previously defined upper bound. How about the third or the last possibility? Well, that will be the situation if it happened that function at xl times function at xm is exactly equal to zero. Well, in that case, that means we are lucky because that means the function at xm is equal to zero. And by definition, if the function at xm is equal to zero, it means the root is xm. So if this is the case, then we stop the algorithm if this is true. But suppose case three is not true, that means we are either belong to case A or case B. In that situation, we must define either the new upper bound or we have to define the new lower bound. All right? Then the procedure is repeated. Once we know the so-called new upper bound, xu, and the new lower bound, x sub l, we use the same uh, formula, four position formula, to calculate the next predicted root, x sub m. And we keep, after we find out x sub m, the new predicted root, again we go through the if check. What happened to fx sub l times x? fx sub m. Again, we have through uh, three possibility, and the procedure keeps repeating, repeating until things getting convergent. So how do we know things converge, or how do we know when to stop? Well, that depending on the so-called this error check, the approximate error check. And basically, what we say is the newly predicted root x sub m at the current iteration minus the predicted root x sub m at the 
all or previous iteration, divide by the current value, and multiply by 100 to convert that into percentage, that together will give us the so-called uh, absolute relative error norm. Error norm. And if this absolute relative error norm, which is so as epsilon a, if that value is very small as compared to some predetermined value, then we say we stop. Okay? So, for example, you see, this is the absolute relative error norm that we just compute based on the previous slides. We compare that with epsilon sub s, which is the user specified, the user specified error tolerance. And if epsilon a is greater than the small tolerance, it means the, the iteration process not converging yet, then we have to go back to step number three. Now, go back to step number three mean what? Go back to step number three, meaning now we have the new lower bound and the upper bound. We have to make the if check again to see if we belong to case A or case 3B or case 3C. And so the procedure is repeated that way. Okay? So the four position method, in summary, is very similar to the bisection algorithm. The only thing different is we have a different formula. Uh, we have a different formula to calculate the newly predicted root x of m. That's all. So, in order for you to understand better, let us give it, uh, an example. And this example, it has some uh, uh, f engineering f physical story behind it. A floating ball has a specific gravity of 0 0.6 and has a radius of 5.5 centimeter. You are asked to find the depth of which the ball is submerged when the floating is in the water. Well, for this chapter, it is not that important to understand how to derive this equation here. But basically, this equation has been derived in our textbook that say, the equation that gives the depth x to which the ball is submerged is the one that I show right here, which is like a cubic or third order polynomial equation. So to find out how much the depth x is submerged in the water, basically it just means finding the root of this cubic nonlinear equation. So let's see what's happening. How do we figure it out? Well, from the physics of the problem, we know, as you can see from the picture, the floating ball submerged in the water. The x is the distance that the ball will be submerged inside the water. So based on the physics of the problem, we know x must be between either 0 and 2r. When x equal to 0, basically it means the ball is like this, x equal to 0. When x equal to 2r, basically the ball is completely submerged. Okay, so this distance right here, x is equal to 2r. And for this configuration, x is equal to 0. But in general, x could be partially submit like this. So we know the x must be between 0 and 2r. And since we already know from this problem the radius is 0.055, 2r, which is the diameter, must be 0.11. So we know from the physics that x must be somewhere between 0 and 0.11. So with that much information, we start with the process according to the fall position method, which is the same thing like the, for the bisection. We have to come up with two valid initial guess, which is the x logo bound and the x upper bound. For this case, we select x logo bound equal to 0, x upper bound equal to 0 
And let's see, are these two initial guess appropriate or not? So what we can do, we can plug in the value of x equal to 0 into the cubic equation that you want to find the root. So you see, whenever you see x, you just replace by 0. So that means the function at x logo bound, meaning the function at x equal to 0, according to this equation, it is a positive number. On the other hand, the function at x u, it means the function at 0 0.11, x equal to 0 0.11. So by doing that, we just again look at the cubic equation. Whenever you see x, you replace by 0 0.11. Whenever you see x, you replace by 0 0.11. And so you find out that the function at x u now is a negative number. And therefore, we ask ourselves, what happened to the product of function at x l times function at x u? Well, function at x l means function at x equal to 0. Function at x u means function at x equal to 0 0.11. This product obviously have a positive sign here and have a negative sign here, so the product is negative. So that means this initial guess, lower bound 0, upper bound 0 0.11, are valid or appropriated. So the question, be the next one becomes, what is the next predicted root? Well, if you remember, we already developed the formula shown in equation 5 earlier. And in that formula, it gives us the equation to figure out the next predicted root, x sub m, which is shown right there. So now, from that equation, we just plug in the numerical value. x sub u is equal to 0 0.11, x upper bound. The function at x lower bound is equal to 3.993 times 10 to the power minus 4 and then minus x sub l, x sub l is equal to 0, times the function at x u, which is this negative value, divide by f x l, which is this value right here, 3.993 times 10 to the power minus 4, subtract, that is subtract right here, the function at x u, and that is given by this negative value. So it turned out that x sub m, the next predicted root, will be equal to 0 0.066. Now after this step is done, we immediately calculate what is a function at x sub m. Again, it, x sub m because it is equal to 0 0.066. So all you have to do is to find out the function at x sub m. We just substitute the value of x sub m, which is 0 0.066. Whenever you see x, you just replace by 0 0.066. Therefore, f at x sub m is equal to this negative value. Now, if you remember, according to our step-by-step -step procedure, after we find out the value of xm and fxm, we have to check to see what happened to the product of fxl and fxm, which means f at 0 times f at 0 0.066. Now, f at 0, we know earlier, is a positive number f at 0 0.066, we know it is a negative number. So basically, it say fxl times fxm is a negative value. And according to my explanation before, 